What is a promise? Well, a promise is a guarantee that something's going to happen. In JavaScript, we use promises to guarantee that that something is going to happen. We create or use an already created promise to tell our program that we're doing something now, and a response to that something will happen sometime in the future. Two minutes from now, two milliseconds from now, it doesn't matter. We want to guarantee that that response gets handled. If it's successful, do this. If it's unsuccessful, do that. So whatever happens, it's a guarantee that it's going to happen and we want it handled. We just don't want to handle it ourselves right now, and we don't want to wait for it to happen. So when you think of a promise, think of like, uh, like set it and forget it. All right, let's build a promise. So we're going to send someone to the store, and then when they get there, they're just going to send us a message back. And so we're going to need a variable to keep track of whether or not they made it. So we'll let made it. It's a Boolean. We'll set to false for now. We're going to set a variable called go to store. Go to store. And that's going to be our promise. The basic syntax for a promise is the keyword new, keyword promise. And it takes one argument, and that is a callback function. If you don't know what a callback function is, I should have a video coming out on it soon. And so this callback function gets two objects passed into it, a resolve and a reject object. If everything goes A-OK -okay in this promise, we can return the resolve. And so if they make it, if made it, then we can return that resolve like this with a message, I made it. You don't have to do a string. It could be an array. It could be an array. It could be an object. It could be an expression, 4 plus 2. We just, whatever gets resolved, gets returned. Now, if they didn't make it, we can return a reject like this with a message, I didn't make it like that. Now this reject is the same as throwing an error. Throw a new error like that. Now, so whether or not you throw an error or reject, same thing. So now when we run it on the right, we see nothing. Now why don't we see anything? Well, this promise did execute. There's a guarantee that they attempted to go, and there's a guarantee that there's some sort of response. We didn't do our part in handling the response. So there are two main functions for handling responses. We can use the then function to handle all of the successful resolves. And then we use the catch function to handle all of the rejects, whether or not those are rejects or errors that we throw, or maybe we didn't uh, code properly and the promise throws a, an error itself. Whatever the error is, it catches it here. And so we can create these guys and they take a callback as well. And their callback gets the response that gets filtered down. And so all of the re resolves get filtered down into these ends. All of the rejects and errors get filtered down, bypasses the ends, and goes into the catches. So we have the response. And I'm just going to use arrow syntax since it's a lot cleaner. We have the response here. We're just going to console log that response like that. Console log response. Same thing with the catch. This time I'll just name it error. These response and errors, you, can, you name it whatever you want. You can name it this if you wanted to. But we're going to rename it or name it error. Arrow function. If you don't know what an arrow function is, I have a video on it. And to chain these to the promise, these are just floating around right now. That's why we're getting this error. We have to chain these properly to the uh, to the promise. We just use this, use this uh, period notation. So we get rid of the semicolons here, right here, up here. We just use a period like this, and we can do that. And the same thing for this guy, period, and we can do that. Now this looks kind of janky, so I normally write it like this, dot then and dot catch. And now when we save and look on the right, we get, I didn't make it. And so because the made it is equal to false, it goes into our promise, our promise returns the reject. This reject gets filtered down bypasses the then and goes straight to the catch. If we change the made it to true, we should get, on the right, I made it. So again, return to resolve, resolve filters down, the then, I don't want to say catch, but the then catches it, and then it prints out that response. Now the cool thing about these, these chains is that you get m multiple links in the chain. So you can have multiple bends uh, uh, filtering each other. And so this then can also return a resolve, but we don't need the resolve here. We can just return, let's say, so we know if we get the uh, the then statement that they made it. So once they make it, we'll just say go to the serial aisle like that. How do you spell aisle? A-I-S-L-E. Aisle like that. And this gets filtered down the chain. In order to catch this return here, we have to have another then. So dot then, 
we get another response. We'll just say response two for this one. And we'll console.log this guy. Response two. And we get on the right side, I made it. Go to the serial aisle. So we know they, they made it to the serial aisle here. And we'll give them another instruction. Uh, pick up five boxes of serial and come back like that. And again, with the catch that, that return is a resolve. It's basically a well, it's not basically, it is a promise. These thens return actual promises. So we catch that, we handle the response with another then. And this is response three. And we'll log this guy out, console.log. And response three. And then when we save, we get, I made it, so they make it, go to the serial aisle. They go to the serial aisle, and then we say pick up five boxes of serial and come back. Again, if we switch this guy to false, actually let's not switch this guy to false. Let's do a... Before we even return the resolve, we'll throw an error. So throw new error, and we'll just say got into an accident, like that. And now when we, accident, there we go. And now when we save, we get error got into an accident. So they didn't even make it to the to the uh, the store here. So where's the set it and forget it nature of a promise? How do I show you that JavaScript can be uh, asynchronous? So what we're gonna do is we're going to create an alarm clock. And we're going to put it into a function this time. So we're going to return a promise in the function instead of just uh, creating the function. So when we call the function, then the promise will execute instead of executing right away. So we're just going to say function alarm bell like that. And it's going to return a new promise. We don't need to resolve or reject anything this time. And so we'll leave that blank. And then we're going to set an artificial timer for our uh, alarm bell. So let's say set timeout. And when it goes off, it's just going to console.log, ding, 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 like that. And we'll set a delay for five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. And now when we call it in the console, alarm bell, we wait five seconds. And we get the response there, ding, ding, ding. Now, again, how do I show you that this alarm bell is running somewhere in the background? And while it's running, we can do other stuff. So let's do this, console.log, and we'll say setting the bell. Now normally, the code gets executed uh, in the order that it was written, and it does get executed in the order it was written, but the promise doesn't resolve in the same order, I'll show you. So console.log, bell went off. So normally what you get is setting the bell, you call a function, that function executes right away, so you get ding, 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 and then you get bell one off. But because this is an asynchronous or a, a promise, an asynchronous function, it takes time for this to, uh, to execute. So what we're going to get is setting the bell off. It's going to execute this. This hasn't resolved yet, so it moves on to the next line. So now when we save on the right, we get setting the bell, bell went off, and we're still waiting for it to go off. And so this is the asynchronous or set it and forget it nature of a promise. And so that's what a promise is. It's a structure that handles a guarantee, and you can chain those guarantees down and down and down the line. And all of this to take care of a future event. And so thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a like, share the video, leave any comments below. Did you understand the part about chaining? If not, just think of those thens as actual promises. They return promises. So just think promises stacked on top of promises. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next video.